Let's study thermodynamics. Thermodynamics is literally the study of heat or the study of temperatures. We are always dealing with pistons. A piston is basically a cylinder with some fitted cap, a cross-sectional area. If I fill this piston with a gas at some pressure P and some volume V, then this is my initial state. Now, if I add heat to this, or if I increase the temperature, then I know that the piston will rise by a delta Y, and the volume will change by this delta V. I know the work is done by the piston. Work is, you remember Fx, which is F delta Y, because that's my delta X there, and I know pressure is force per unit area. Solving this, I get work as P A delta Y, but you remember A delta Y is really delta V. So in this unit, whenever we talk about work, it's always pressure times change in volume. Work is always going to be the area of your PV graphs. We're going to be doing quite a number of PV graphs in this area, in this unit. Convention gets us. If delta V is positive, then the work is being done by the gas. The gas is expanding. If delta V is negative, then work is being done on the gas. So work done by a gas is by convention negative, and work done on a gas is by convention positive. So let's talk about internal energy. The internal energy is the sum of all of the energies of your system. And we're going to label that delta U. While heat is Q. This is from the Q equals MC delta T that you learned in chemistry. Now, if the temperature increases, the change in internal energy increases. If the temperature change is zero, then you have no change in internal energy. So let's look at the first law of thermodynamics. The first law states that the internal energy of a system, delta U, tends to increase when heat is added and work is done on a system. Similarly, it is equal to the heat added minus the work done by. So you have to be very careful in these problems to figure out whether the work is being done on the system or the work is being done by the system. So this delta always tells you that there is some change. While this tells us we're really adding negatives here when we do work done by a system. Let's do an example. Sketch a PV diagram to find the work done by the gas during the following stages. Now, the gas is going to expand from 1 liter to 3 liters at a constant pressure of 3 liters. So, 1 liter to 3 liters at a constant pressure of, of 3 atmospheres, excuse me. Work is P delta V, so it's 3. Always convert it to Pascals. Final minus initial, so I get a, a work done by the gas of 600 joules. The gas is in cooled at a constant volume until the pressure falls to 2 atmospheres, so it comes straight down. Now you remember, work is P delta V. There is no volume change here, so the work is 0. Now, we're going to have the gas being compressed at a constant volume of 2 atmospheres from 3 to 1. So, the work done on is minus P delta V, or 2, constant volume. Now, final is 1, minus one uh, liter, and then 0.1 liter, and then um, initial is 0.03. So we get a work of negative 400 joules. Now we're going to heat the gas and increase its pressure from 2 atmospheres to 3 at a constant volume. For the same reasons, the volume is changes 0. So the work done on the system at this point in time is 0. Now look at this. When we go clockwise, we tend to say the work is positive. We go counterclockwise, the work is negative. And the area inside this shape is going to be your net work. So 600 
minus 400 gives you 200 joules of work are done. Now let's work through this example. I have a series of, of thermodynamic processes as shown in my graph. I start at A, go to B, and then from B I go to D. From A to B I add 150 joules of heat. From B to D I add 600. Let's see how we can fill in this chart. I'm told that I add 150 joules from A to B. And then I add 600 joules from B to D. So I have a total energy change of 750 joules of heat added to this system. Now let's see if we can find the work. The work from A to B is zero because there is no volume change. From B to D, I have a work change of, of 8 times 10 to the 4th pascals times 5 minus 2 times 10 to the negative 3 meters cubed or 240 joules. Adding these straight down, I get a work change of 240 joules. Now, moving on to the change in internal energy. I know the change in internal energy is Q plus W, so from A to B, there is a change in internal energy of 150 joules. From B to D, it's 840 joules. And from A to B, it's 990 joules. Now let's go to the steps down here. I know the total change of energy from A to C to D has to be 990 joules. So let's work backwards. I know the work from A to C is 90 because it's 3 times 10 to the 4th pascals times 5 minus 2 times 10 to the negative 3 meter squared, meter cubed. From C to D, I know the work done is 0. So the total work done from A to C to D is 90. You see I had a significant change in the amount of work from A to B to D as from A to C to D. So this tells me that the heat that must be added between A to C to D is 900 joules. Now let's look at a variety of thermodynamic processes that we need to understand. The first process is isothermal. Iso means same, thermal means temperature. On an isotherm, the temperature stays the same. Now remember, because the temperature stays the same, the internal energy stays the same. So we wind up with the heat added has to be the work done by the system. For an isobaric process, the pressure stays the same. Iso is same, baric is temperature. In this case, the change in internal energy is Q minus W. Now we can use it on this example because the work is positive in this case, where work is pressure, your uh, one pressure there, times V2 minus V1. Isovolumetric are also called isochoric. In this case, delta V is zero. Now because delta V is zero, we know the work must be zero. Because the work is zero, we know the change in internal energy must equal the heat. An adiabatic process is a little bit more interesting. These are isothermal curves here. An adiabatic process is, has a much steeper curve. Adiabatic literally means impassable. And what an adiabat means is there is no heat entering or leaving the system. This is a, iso, um, a thermally ice insulated situation. Since delta Q must be zero, then the change in internal energy has to equal minus the work done by, or of course, the work done on a system. So in summary, you need to understand how these different uh, curves relate to each other. An isobaric is horizontal, an isochoric is vertical, an isothermal is curved, and an adiabat looks like an isotherm, but it's much steeper. 
let's go on to the second law of thermodynamics. This is a fascinating study of, of um, how engines work. We know that heat does not spontaneously flow from a warmer body to a cooler body, and heat cannot be completely transformed into mechanical work. This is a conservation of energy. Basically, heat always goes from hot to cold, and nothing is 100% efficient. Let's look at engines. In engines, we always have a high temperature reservoir. This is going to be your engine of your car, and this is going to be a measure of the heat in. Now, something happens in here. We don't know what. We don't care what. We get some work out, and then we have some more heat that is discharged into a low temperature reservoir. This would be your exhaust. So remember, engine, exhaust, work out. We know that the heat uh, from the hot reservoir has got to equal the work plus the heat discharged to the cold reservoir. So the work output is going to be simply the difference in the heat from the high reservoir to the heat from the cold reservoir. Now cold does not necessarily mean cool, it just means lower temperature than your hot reservoir. These uh, QCs can still be quite, quite hot. Let's talk about efficiency. The efficiency is, is defined to be the work done by your Q hot. Another way to write this is QH minus QC divided by QH, or 1 minus QC over QH. You need to use whatever equation works. The rate at which energy is used is another concept that is um, important. The rate at which heat is absorbed is QH divided by T, while the rate at which heat is uh, expelled is QC divided by T, and the rate at which work is done is W divided by T, and of course W divided by T is power. Let's look at the efficiency. Another way to write the efficiency is work divided by QH by doing a little magic manipulation. I get that's the power divided by QH per T. You could also write the power, QH divided by T, is power divided by efficiency. I wouldn't worry too much about those equations. Now, back in 1820, there was a, a scientist, an engineer by the name of Carnot, who wanted to study ideal engines. And so a lot of times we, t we deal with um, what, are, what we're going to refer to as the Carnot efficiency. Imagine you have a water wheel. All right, that is um, taking water from a high um, altitude to a low altitude. Carnot believed there was some absolute zero down here for which you couldn't take the water any lower, and this is our concept of absolute zero. So if you were able to take the water, say, only 50% of the way down this water wheel, then you would have only a 50% efficiency. So when we look at the Carnot efficiency, there are two ways to look at it. It is QH minus QC over QH, or 1 minus QC over QH. Now, you can also write this in terms of the temperatures. It's the hot temperature minus the cold temperature divided by the hot temperature. A Carnot engine has four different um, cycles. Number one, you have some sort of isothermal expansion. Then you have an adiabatic expansion. Then you have an isothermal compression and an adiabatic compression. Let's do a problem. Suppose we have an engine that has a power output of 5,000 watts with an efficiency of 25%. If the engine expels 800 joules of heat each time for each cycle, and the heat find the heat absorbed and the time for the cycle. Well, let's see. I know the power is 5,000 watts, and I know the efficiency is 25%. So that's going to translate into E being 0.25. 25% is 0.25. So plugging this in, I get 0.25 
is 1 minus 8,000 divided by QH or a QH of 10,667 joules. Now, how did I know this 8,000 was QC? Because it said it expels. So I know that the work done is QH minus QC, which solves for W as being QH minus 8,000. So I get a work done of 2,667 joules. Remember, power is work divided by time. So, the time has got to equal, when I put this work of 266 in, of 0.53 seconds. So each cycle is only about a half a second. Let's do another example. Suppose I have a, a, an engine that has Carnot efficiency of 0.3, or 30%. If it absorbs 8, 800 joules of heat per cycle from a hot temperature reservoir of 500K, find the heat expelled and the temperature of the cold reservoir. Well, since I um, have I have the efficiency is 30% or 0.3, I can solve E as W divided by QH for W, and I get W is equal to 240 joules. Now I know the work done is QH minus QC, so I can solve this for QC and get 560 joules. Whenever I want the temperature, I always go to the efficiency is TH minus TC divided by TH. And I solve this and get a temperature of 350K.